Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And the MCU is failing to pay royalties. Yeah, to, are we shocked? To comic book creators. Um, no, they were, I'm not they shocked. They weren't paying the people, the Star Wars writers and stuff either for the books they had, they bought. Yeah, so this is coming up again. Um, and this is on the uh, Hollywood Reporter that, you know, again, uh, comic book creators creating a lot of the, the newer characters that are being used in the MCU are getting screwed out of their royalty payments. But what's shocking is just how low those payments are. I mean, we're talking payments as low as $5,000 for characters that star in billion dollar movies. Mm -hmm. You know, that's ridiculous. Like you'd get more money just freelancing on some indie comic than having your character picked up in a major movie. Well, you know, Disney has to make up all their losses somehow. They do, so they're gonna bleed the comic book uh, creators. And the books aren't selling. <laughs> so. The books aren't selling, yeah. So anyway, this is uh, this is coming up again. Before it was, the royalties are low, and now they're claiming there is a bait and switch on payments. They basically would promise people more money, and then they turn around and don't give them that Disney much money. Disney would never. Disney would never backpedal on their promises. Uh, so we're gonna talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 272,000 subs. Woo! Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about Disney, we talk about comics, having worked in and around the comic book industry for a number of years, and Disney for a number of years. This and- makes like three Disney videos we recorded today. Yeah, three today. They're all like the Disney shit that they're pulling. They, they own everything. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Like, you hate Disney, and you, you should talk about something else. What? All the big things they own. They own everything. You should just shut your channel down, Clownfish, because I don't like you. You should just fuck off. You should just turn off YouTube. Don't watch us. You don't have to watch us. Anyway, um, this is not us. This is comic book creators coming out and saying that, that uh, it was a bait and switch. Doesn't matter. We invent all the bad news. We make all, up all, all the bad news. We do this just to make Disney look bad. We're working with The Hollywood Reporter just to make Disney That's look right. bad. Marvel's movie math. Comic creators claim it's bait and switch on payments. Now, why would comic book creators think they're treated fairly when they did a bait and switch on Scarlett Johansson? Mm -hmm. You know, and then we're yeah, talking she, millions. She, but she had, there was a lot more there. She got it, she got. She got millions of dollars. Yeah, writers and artists who create characters that power the MCU say the company offers a... They offer a really complicated compensation system that underpays them. Yes, they do. Uh, in July 2021, they talk about Scarlett Johansson. Um, then they talk about that Devin Grayson artist G.J. Jones believed they would take home $25,000 each for uh, Yelena, uh, her sister, mm -hmm. quote unquote sister, right? In Black Widow, thanks to the paperwork they signed. So the writer and the artist each thought they were getting twenty five dollars because this character was in the Black Widow movie. Um, Grayson and Jones created her in 1999. They eventually received payments in November that $25,000 dwindled to $5,000 without explanation. Oh, really? Um, Grayson has spent the last year seeking an answer and a journey that sheds light on how Marvel compensates the comic book writers and artists behind the characters fueling the most successful film franchises in history. Those who work with the company describe uh, the system that leaves creators wondering how Marvel arrived at the figures. Um, I've heard $5,000, which is insulting. I mean, when, when like the Winter Soldier, for God's sake, the whole movie was basically based on that version of Bucky. Mm -hmm. And it was a $5,000 deal for Here's a billion dollar the movie. the thing, though, to be fair, when you create these characters and you create these books, you already work for hire. So they yeah. can argue that they already paid you for that work. They don't have to give you something else. That is true. I, I mean, mean, that's the argument they can make. That is the argument. I'm the, not agreeing with it. I'm just saying. The flip side is for years, comic book creators, unless you own the character, like you know, it was your comic strip or something like that. Uh, seldom, if ever, got paid anything. Some of them weren't even allowed. Like they wouldn't even invite them to the set to see the characters that they created. That you know, surprise me. Uh, they wouldn't invite them to premieres. They were basically just like, well, you, you know, you were just a, a spoke in a wheel. You know. Um, so anyway, there was supposed to be a, a twenty five thousand dollar theatrical film appearance fee, uh, two thousand dollars for an episode of uh, TV over thirty minutes, a thousand for an episode of TV. Uh, 30 minutes of less. Action figures, $5,000. All this money. For video games, there would be a maximum of $30,000 to be shared among the creators. Uh, buried within the document was language that granted Marvel broad discretion to dramatically lower payments. Oh, that's, that's, that's tacky. Language Grayson and others who spoke to THR say is misleading given that the $25,000 is listed prominently in the paperwork. Well, one, did you guys have lawyers look this over? Because you always have a lawyer look this over. But if it's that buried and misleading, then, the, you know. 
Yeah, so we have signed papers with Disney before. We've actually had Disney option stuff before. And you really have to read those contracts very, very well. Because uh, in, in one case, like it was like, you know, they optioned the series. They had no obligation to uh, create the series. But uh, if you cash the check, you're basically agreeing that if they come up with something that happens to be very similar to your idea, which happened, you waive all rights to sue them. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to sue them uh, because you took the money. So a lot of times it's cheaper just to option stuff, even if you have no intention of actually green lighting it or option it, take the bits you like and let somebody else. Right. You know. And then claim they took it from you later. Right, but right. this, you know, this they hid they hid the language in the thing. And who would know? Who would ever agree to this? I mean, it's obviously hidden. Yeah. And they could probably argue in court. You know, they prominently featured that amount, hid this other thing in there. But who in their right mind would agree that I'm using, I'm agreeing to this, but I understand that they might give me nothing or give me a dollar or give me something significantly lower. No one would agree to that. Well, the thing is, is you don't really have a choice because if you're, if you're work for hire, and this is why people are like, why aren't there new comic book characters from Marvel and DC? And why, why are they just going back to the well or, or just creating like offshoots of, of classic characters like Batman, Superman, Green Lantern? This is the reason why. Because what incentive is there for somebody to come in and say, hey, I'm going to create a whole new superhero team and you guys can go make a movie for a billion dollars and I get like 5,000 bucks. Well, yeah. And the you thing know? is, everybody's going to go do their own thing. And in this day and age, you can do your own thing. You do not need Disney. You do not need Marvel to do it. So it's really short-sighted of, of Marvel or DC or Disney to, mm. to screw over creators because they're not going to get anything new out of it. Like they're gonna no eventually people are gonna grow tired of your shit. Well, apparently she did go get a lawyer. Um, she learned some of the ways that Marvel cut down the sum. Marvel splits the sum between the writer and the I artist. I wondered. Yeah, so half of twenty five thousand split with Jones, uh, Yelena's co creator. What's more, if a film features more than one character covered by a special character agreement, the company will share the pot of money among all creators with skin in the game. So you could have like. A whole bunch of people involved in it, and everybody gets you know like two thousand bucks or whatever. Yeah, but the way it was, it was like well, these people were agreeing to it, thinking they were getting that each. Yeah, they thought they were getting that each. Um, another way Marvel shrinks payments is by classifying some film appearances as cameos, according to sources. If a character appears for less than fifteen percent of screen time, that's considered a cameo. Thus, as creators are due less money by that standard, uh, Sebastian Stan's Winter Soldier, a character key to Captain America Civil War, would be considered a cameo. He appeared in 22 minutes, under 15%. And you've got these movies that have so many damn characters in them, they all get a couple of minutes of screen right. time. Now, remember how much money that Disney makes on, on these films. Yes. And this is what they do. Now, we're talking like at the maximum, these people are getting $25,000 or whatever each, and they are doing, they're behaving this way to make sure they don't have to give them any of this money or give them very little of this money. That's how cheap ass they are as they're pocketing all the money. Yeah. Um, so they talk about uh, one source who reps the so creators. Trash. Yeah, I know. Behind several A-list Marvel characters notes, one client who never signed paperwork is better off than those who did. He has a lawyer that doesn't listen to Marvel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of the bigger creators probably do have the means to go hire a really good attorney to be like, you know, no, this isn't fair. And they said that there are different deals for different creators. It depends on who you are. You know, so you're going to get somebody like probably Bendis who gets in there and is like, no, you're going to give me, you're using Miles Morales, you're going to give me a shit ton of money for that. Well, this is interesting. So basically, Joe Casey didn't sign the agreement about yeah. America Chavez. And the reason being, because we would end up with $5,000 and maybe $5,000 is a lot to somebody, but for him, he's using the, he's using it as a chance to speak out against it. So that you, if you don't sign the papers, you're not gagged by an NDA. Yeah, which, or, uh, well, they, or what's the other one, the non disparagement. Yeah, which, which Disney does lock you into. Again, you take the money from them. There's a whole bunch of riders that like, you're not allowed to, you know, sue them. You're not allowed to disparage them. You're not allowed to talk about the project. It, you know, eventually in our case, we got our rights back to everything, but it took a couple of years for those to, to lapse. A few months after Johansson and Disney settled the lawsuit that they have with Scarlett Johansson, that uh, Yelena showed up again in Hawkeye. Yeah. Okay. And now she's a key player in the MCU. Per the agreement Grayson signed, she should receive $2,000 for a TV episode appearance or $1,000 a split with Jones. When Grayson reached Marvel in July, she was informed that according to their calculations, that wasn't quite right. How about 300 an episode? 300 bucks an episode. 
This is how this is how ridiculously shitty. This is Hollywood accounting. This is like well, this is like their accounting member where that one person, the whistleblower, came out and pointed out Disney's uh, the, the 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 show game Disney was playing with yeah. their money. Yeah. And then then the person they they basically went after her to ruin her life for the most part. Yeah. Um. But this is this is kind of like how uh, David Prowse never got royalties on. Darth Vader, mm-hmm. because the studio kept making sure that Return of the Jedi never made money or something, and uh, he wasn't getting, like, if it wasn't for the action figure royalties, he wouldn't get jack shit, you know, for it, and that's why a lot of these, you know, celebrities do so many conventions, because in a lot of ways, that's the only way they can monetize. Like, you can be in a billion dollar franchise and still be broke and have to do conventions every weekend just to, to make money right. off of it. Another reason why Hollywood is shit and that we should do everything we can to turn away from them and do our own things. Find your entertainment elsewhere. Because this is the way these people behave. Yeah, this is, I mean, for all these people who are like clamoring to get deals. Now, if you own the character, you're co-creator of a character, something like that, you're going to get a better deal. This is, again, maybe. Work. Maybe because we see other people sell it to like different uh, different studios, and then for their show, after the show was over, they got nothing. The studio kept the character, and they can make a subpar reboot and rip the shit off, which we're going to talk about in another episode. We are, we are going to talk about that because you, you a lot of times showrunners sell the rights to their show in exchange for getting a job, basically working on the show they created. And when that show's over, they get they get gone, and they, like, you know, Gravity Falls. And then Disney, or whatever studio it is, gets to keep it, do whatever the hell they want with it. Yeah, and they don't have to pay you anything. Mm-mm. Uh, anyway, we're gonna wrap this one up. Yep. Very interesting. I think we're gonna see a lot more of this in the future as it comes out. And it's just, like, little things like this that just keep chipping away at Disney because they are probably... As far as I know, with most studios, they're the most egregious when it comes yeah. to this kind of stuff. Do better. Like, do better, Disney. No, I'm not, I'm not being a smart ass. I'm serious. Do better, because this is bullshit. This is absolute shit. And they probably paid the lawyers more money than they would they, they, in writing these little contract loopholes than they would have paid the creators to begin with. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, Gosh. guys. We'll, we'll talk later. Bye.